Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episode 4 of HBO's The Penguin, entitled Centani. Uh, Centani means 100 years in Italian, and it's often used in the exact same context that we saw it in, in this episode, when, when doing the toast. It basically means, like, may you live 100 years, which gives the title a nice little taste of irony, given that when Sophia said it, she knew they were going to live to the next day, uh, let alone 100 years. But uh, in my video for episode three, I said that this show is getting better each week, and that a large part of that is because of the performances of Colin Farrell and Kristen Milioti. Well, that trend continued this week with another great episode, and this one was anchored by Kristen alone in a magnificent performance, uh, showing us Sophia transitioning from a bright-eyed and optimistic young woman <laughs> to a woman who kills her whole family. <laughs> um, I want to have a larger conversation about the quality of this show and how it's being received a little bit later, uh, but this show is more than just those performances. It's doing a lot of things right. I'm going to lay all that shit out so we can be honest about this show because regardless of whether or not you like the show, if you're walking around saying it's a bad show, you're objectively wrong. Like, everything isn't for everyone, and you don't have to like it, that's cool. But what we're not gonna do is spout off, like, hyperbolic bullshit for internet engagement. Like, or because you think it makes you look like a sophisticated viewer or some shit. Like, just say that you don't enjoy it, or it's not for you, or whatever the case may be. Don't watch it, and then the most important step is to just shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you know what I do when I see people enjoying a show that I don't like? I keep scrolling and mind my fucking business. It's super easy to do. I encourage everyone to try it, but I'll, I'll continue that little rant later. Let's talk about this great episode. And that conversation, again, it starts and ends with Kristen Milioti. I mean, again, <laughs> this is the second time I'm saying this. Talk about a villain or origin story, right? This episode starts with Sophia at a charity luncheon promoting mental health because her mother committed suicide by hanging. And the episode ends with her killing her family. And watching Kristen take this character from, again, the, the, the bright-eyed optimist who wants to help women to uh, becoming the person that she was wrongfully accused of being, watching that was remarkable. But before I get into what we learned about Sophia this week, I want to briefly talk about the opening scene that takes place before the flashbacks start. At the end of the last episode, uh, we saw the scene from Victor's perspective. He's in the car. He can't hear shit. He just sees Sophia and Oz being held at gunpoint, and he reacts, he responds. Uh, this week, in a scene that I didn't even realize I needed until I got it, we see that same scene from Sophia's perspective. And I love that they showed us that. So uh, Nadia, uh, as a reminder, that's Maroney's wife, uh, she reveals in front of Sophia, to Sophia, that Oz killed Alberto. And as we'll come to learn throughout the episode, this was much more than just Oz having killed her brother, which is uh, plenty enough, right? That, that's a pretty big... Pretty, pretty big crime. But this is him having killed the only man in her life that didn't stab her in the back. This is him betraying her for a second time, just as she begun to trust him uh, against her better judgment, and just as he told her that he was sorry for what happened to her with tears in his eyes <laughs> last week for us, but moments ago for her. But um, maybe more so than anything uh, that happened at Arkham, I think this is the moment that breaks her. But it's also the moment where I think she starts to th see things more clearly. It's at this point she understands that if she wants to survive, it's gonna, it, she's going to have to take matters into her own hands. It's time for a fresh start. She just has to wipe the, uh, wipe the slate clean first, and she does so in spectacular fashion, uh, rerouting gas throughout the house to kill everyone in their sleep. Uh, everyone except Johnny Vitti. It's unclear, I think, whether or not uh, he just so happened to sleep with his window open or if she opened it intentionally. But I feel like it might be the latter. Uh, if she had meant for him to be dead, she could have just grabbed that gun and just shot him. There was no one else alive in the house to even give a shit or hold her accountable for it. But instead, she wakes him, uh, which makes me think that she might have plans for him. Uh, oh, and lastly, the other benefit of that opening scene is that it lets us know why Oz was so willing to leave Sophia after Victor rescued them, which at the time, it did seem kind of odd. Like, I thought y'all was working together. Why would you leave her like that? So I'm glad the show is making sure that everything uh, fits together properly and makes sense. And you know what? That's something the bad shows generally don't do. So uh, again, points for this show. Hey, everybody. I just want to take a small break from this review to talk about the various other ways you can engage with me on other platforms. If you're so inclined, uh, and I understand why you wouldn't, I am an acquired taste, but 
You can join the Patreon where you can get extra content like retro reviews where I review old shows and movies to see if they still hold up today. Mike's Musings where I talk about shows I'm watching that I don't cover on the channel. Or Mike's VOD where you can commission me to watch a show which I will then review on the channel. And if you want to engage with me and chat with me more directly, I also implore you to join the Discord and follow the Facebook page. I set up channels in the Discord for all of us to discuss the shows I'm reviewing on the channel. And I also drop new videos in there since it's the easiest platform for me to share to from my phone. The Facebook can be really fun because I sort of live comment on shows I'm watching, often while under the influence, I'm not going to lie. And I'll also share news there, both about television and film, and about myself as well. So if you like my content, you want to be more engaged, you think I'm charming, or you simply want to show support, feel free to sign up for the Patreon or join the Discord or Facebook today. Links to all platforms are in every video description. Remember to share all my shit to your respective social media platforms. And now back to this review. So after Oz and Victor leave the scene, Sophia passes out while calling Julian Rush, and that's when the flashback scenes begin. Right away in the flashbacks, I made note of the nature of Oz and Sophia's relationship at this time. He's her driver at this time, which we knew happened in the past, and they seem to get along well and they respect each other. He seems loyal. She seems to like him. After the mental health uh, luncheon that I mentioned at the top, uh, Sophia is approached by the uh, the flesh version of a reporter named Summer Gleason, who is a character from Batman the Animated Series. Uh, Summer tells her about uh, the women that hang themselves, uh, the women that we know Sophia is going to be accused of having killed. Uh, she tells Sophia that these women all work for Carmine, and she hopes that Sophia, you know, having lived through her mother's suicide and having, you know, a, a soft spot for, for mental health, will help her gain access to the women that work at one of Carmine's clubs. Sophia initially refuses, and after an unsettling conversation with Carmine about her mother's mental state, she reaches back out to Summer later and arranges a meeting that Oz drives her to. And I, I, even immediately that moment, I'm just like, is this something that Oz should have been involved in? But Summer tells Sophia that uh, the women had evidence of manual strangulation and defensive wounds on their fingers as if they were fighting off an attacker. Then the show does something I'm not sure I've ever seen before. <laughs> a flashback within a flashback. <laughs> uh, so the first time it happens, we go back even farther to Sophia as a child discovering her mother's body hanging from the rafters. I was I said hanging from the rafters like a championship, like a championship banner. <laughs> hanging from, I don't know, she's hanging. Uh, later, when we return to this moment during Summer and uh, Sophia's conversation, Sophia recalls her mother having the same defensive wounds on her fingers like we see it. Uh, we also see Carmine come in to shield her from the site. But before I get into that, I want to talk about Carmine specifically for a second. Earlier in the flashback, we learned that not only does Carmine wear shades at the dinner table, but, but that he's disappointed by Alberto and he wants Sophia to take over for him. And that's interesting for a couple of reasons. For starters, I immediately noticed that he had shades on, <laughs> but I didn't think much of it. Like lots of motherfuckers wear sunglasses indoors. It's not a huge deal, right? None of them look half as cool as he did in his uh, <laughs> Vito Corleone and Godfather 2 costume. Uh, but later, in the, uh, Inception, <laughs> in the Inception flashback, when he comes to shield Sophia from uh, her mother's body, he has the shades on then, too. And Sophia tries to take him off, but he won't let her. And I, I, don't still, I, I don't have a theory for what that means, if anything, but there seems to still be uh, an important piece missing, and it could be connected to the shades, or more specifically, the eyes. I could be reaching here, but uh, this doesn't seem like Carmine losing his shit and just strangling women, like, including his wife. Uh, like he's seen, as a matter of fact, he seemed pretty fucking progressive <laughs> when he was willing to uh, have a woman take over for him rather than his own son. He wants the best person for the job, doesn't give a shit if it's a man or a woman, just the best person for the job. And that same guy is, I'm supposed to believe, is walking around strangling the women at his club and his own wife. Now, <laughs> to be clear, I'm not saying he didn't do it. <laughs> uh, Sophia even said that he had wounds on his hand the day that their mother died, her mother died. But I am saying that maybe he was under the influence of something else when he did it. And maybe him wearing shades all the time is some sort of clue as to what that could be. I don't know. Just guessing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, anyway, after, so me after Sophia meets with Summer, she gets in the car with Oswald and he immediately advises her, like, you shouldn't be meeting with reporters. Your dad's not going to like that. And if we, oh, I'm sorry, and she, and she, she snaps on him in response. I, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was, the energy was, shut the fuck up, you're my driver, <laughs> and ask for all that opinion. And if we've learned one thing about Oz, 
is that he doesn't like to be made to feel small. Hashtag take up space. And if we've learned two things about Oz, it's that he's ambitious as fuck. So when Oz approaches Sophia at this party and says that her father wants to see her, I like squirmed in my seat because I immediately knew what happened. Like I put in my nose like, oh my God, this is where, this is the moment that she's been talking about this whole time where he betrayed her. This is it right here. He told about, he told Carmine about the reporter. And when a show puts as much effort into fleshing out their characters as this one has, it makes these moments more powerful and more impactful. Uh, also, I often talk about how the best shows think about the little things. And I loved how in this scene, when Oz approaches her, she talks to him like he's like a fucking pet or something. She's like, <laughs> like, why are you in the house? <laughs> like, like, like he's an outside penguin or some shit. And Oz had already undoubtedly snitched by that point. But I bet that moment validated for him his decision to snitch. Because here she is again, making him feel small, reminding him of his place. Like, yeah, I, I'm nice to you, but you're still my driver. You know, you can't sit with us. This is mean girls. I, I just thought that was a really nice touch. So she meets with Carmine, and yes, he has indeed found out that she spoke with the reporter and that he is being investigated for the murder of these women. After she points out that he had wounds on his hands the day that, again, the day that the mother died, he kicks her out. Uh, Oz is, of course, driving her home. He's her driver. <laughs> awkward, <laughs> awkward ride, right? And they're immediately pulled over, and Sophia's arrested for the murders of the hanged women and Summer Gleason. Uh, we learn that everyone, Carmine, Luca, Carla, they all wrote letters claiming that she has a history of mental illness ever since her mom died, and she's going to be sent to Arkham for six months to await trial for these murders. And look, I understand Carmine's desire to get away with murder. I doubt anybody wants to go to prison for murder, but he was ready to, to buck tradition and have a woman replace him as the head of the family. And all she did was inquire about these women. She's like, I know you ain't do it, but <laughs> this is what's happening. And this is how he responds, like getting his own daughter committed to an asylum, Arkham Asylum, and keeping her there for 10 years. Like, I just feel like there's something else at play here. The sunglasses, getting his daughter committed, that bliss drug, how, how the people in Arkham were responded to it. I feel like it's all connected and Carmine is trying to bury something that's even bigger than just, I don't want to say just the seven dead women. Like, that's a small thing. But you get my point. Like, I don't think it's just the seven dead women. I think there might be something more to this. So at this point in the episode, we were about halfway through it. And I, I said on Facebook that a large part of just how good this episode was going to be relied on what took place at Arkham. And, and, and the episode, it definitely fucking delivered, man. Uh, once in Arkham, we meet the lead doctor. His name is Dr. Ventress. Uh, and Julian Rush, again, played by Theo Rossi, is his assistant. It's immediately clear that Dr. Ventress is working for Carmine, too, so Sophia's not going to get anything, any kind of a fair assessment here. Uh, throughout the time at Arkham, we get a number of scenes that are meant to show us how her treatment made her into who she is today. But these scenes also kind of serve to put us in Sophia's shoes and help us feel the disorientation that she felt from these, uh, these electroshock therapy treatments. And I, I really enjoyed how they... Uh, depicted the experiments and the aftermath of them. Like, she starts to lose her mind. She's tearing at the walls of her cell. She's dreaming that she's being strangled, so that's how she got the the, the marks on her neck. Uh, the, the way they shoot all of these scenes, is it's very, like, uh, I, I don't I don't want to say for sure it was, like, like handheld, but, like, that's how it felt. Very handheld, very frantic, very disorienting. I I, I enjoyed how they, how they did that. Uh, another thing that I liked is how her treatment in Arkham kind of parallels with how... The prison, prison system in America works today. Like, she was a crusader for women's mental health when she went into Arkham, and when she came out, she was a murderer, and she eventually killed her whole family. <laughs> so I, I, I love that connection. That's something that we see in, in, in America a lot today. The only thing that kind of threw me, and I wrote it off because at the end of the day, none of this was ever meant to be fair to Sophia, but I wasn't totally clear on... Uh, what the impetus was for even starting the electroshock therapy treatments in the first place. So there's a scene where a woman who has clearly been unchained for the purpose of assaulting Sophia, uh, and shout, shout out to that woman too, man. She she crushed that that those couple of scenes, man. That lady was a 10 out of 10 creepy, so shout out to her. Like, it, like in a show where you've got Colin Farrell and Kristen Milioti just completely showing their ass, like, like really doing an outstanding job, that woman crushed that those couple of scenes that she had as that... Uh, that crazy woman. But anyway, after the assault, 
Uh, the woman is brought before Sophia in chains, and Sophia is unchained and given a fork. And if it wasn't obvious that this was a test meant to uh, meant to be used against her, Ventress, Ventress is standing there with a pen and notepad, like, just waiting, like, as soon as she killed this motherfucker, I'm gonna write it up. And Sophia doesn't kill the woman, but the woman overpowers Sophia, takes the fork, and then stabs herself repeatedly in the neck with it. And then Sophia's getting electroshock treatment. It's like, what? Like, how is she responsible for this? Why does she need to be punished? I mean, yeah, like I said, it was never meant to be fair to her, but, like, what was what was the rationalization for that? <laughs> She's getting punished for pa passing a test and doing the right thing? But ultimately, where I landed at is uh, I see why it's not... Uh, well, it's not an official gripe for me because passing the test for them would have been killing the woman. They could go, ah, she killed another patient. Told you she was a murderer, and then now everything that they've accused her of is validated. When she doesn't do it, it's not serving the purpose they want. So plan B is to just make her into that murderer with the electroshock treatments. And she still resists. Even if it's not until Alberto tells her that Ventress said that she's not fit for trial and she's not getting out, that finally she gives in. Like the treatment at Arkham gets the best of her. She kills the woman in her neighboring cell, Magpie, uh, in the mess hall with the lunch tray. Uh, it sounded like, <laughs> sound like a wild game of Clue, didn't it? <laughs> but we return to present day uh, after Sophia spent 10 years in Arkham and she's finally uh, coming to and she's in Julian's office. I will say this as a point of criticism about the Arkham scenes. They could have done a better job of making me believe that Julian and Sophia would have a positive relationship present day. Like the, the relationship that we've seen them have in present day. I don't think they did enough in the Arkham scenes to make me believe that Sophia would be cool with him to this degree. The whole time I'm watching the Arkham scenes, I'm like, why does she fuck with him in present day? Like the best I thought about him during the Arkham scenes was he might not believe that she killed those women. But if so, he's still complicit in allowing a woman he believes is innocent to be tortured. But we later learn that he helped her get released. And in this scene, when she wakes up in his office, they suggest that he's even sexually attracted to her as well. And I mean, <laughs> to his credit, has she always had hips like that? Because <laughs> I mean, man, I, was, <laughs> I gotta feel him. But uh, Sophia tells Julia uh, she needs a fresh start implying that she actually is going to go off to Italy like uh, Vidi, I would say like Vidi asked her to, like, no, more like Vidi threatened her to. But no, we're treated to yet another standout scene from Kristen, uh, the big, <laughs> the big fuck everybody at this table dinner scene. Uh, Sophia arrives at the dinner with an edgier look. She's got a new hairstyle. She's got the sexy yellow dress, hugging the hips, looking good. Uh, and she proceeds to drag everyone at the table for betraying her, even though she, she loved and trusted them. She applies she's going to go to Italy to start this new life, but no, the new life is her being done letting people walk all over her and betray her. Uh, she takes Carla's daughter out to the greenhouse in the middle of the night, and they're going to spend the night out there, and they have such an om <laughs> ominous conversation. The daughter is like, my mom said I can't talk to you because you did some bad stuff. And Sophia's like, yeah, yeah, I, I did some bad stuff, but there were, there were monsters in Arkham when I was there, and I had to fight them to survive. And I'm going to make sure that you never have to fight any monsters. And I'm just sitting there like... She's about to kill every motherfucker in this house. <laughs> and then they wake up in the morning. And I'm like, wait, so she genuinely slept out there? Like, I know she's not about to kill people in the morning. That's not right. But if ever they were a gracious kill, this was it. They they all died in their sleep, which is which is better than they deserve. Uh, so I want to close by uh, revisiting my little rant from earlier. Is this the best show on TV? Or, or, or no, I'm sorry. Is this the best show of the year? Is the best? Is this the best show on TV? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think industry uh, holds that belt at the moment and probably will for the remainder of the year. But why am I seeing people act like this show is bad? Like, I'm in a Facebook group. Nah, I won't say which one it is. But then over the past couple of weeks, there have been several instances of people coming in and going like, The Penguin is terrible. This is the worst show on TV. I can barely watch this. Listen, if this is the worst show on TV to you, this must be the only show that you've watched all year. That is complete and total hyperbole. And for what? Like, why are you Why are you even saying that shit? You think Andy Greenwald is going to see your snobby fucking opinion on Facebook and send you a friend request? He's not. Like, <laughs> this same group did the same thing with Sugar. Like, I feel like if you watch that show with an open mind, ready to form your own authentic opinion and not the opinion that you think everyone else is going to say so you can cowardly align with them, you probably would have been, been impressed by the fact 
that they pulled off what is a totally ridiculous premise on paper, but they pulled it off. But instead, I just saw a bunch of instant, like, knee-jerk, uh, this twist, this stupid reactions, which felt more like this is what I'm supposed to say to look smart, rather than their actual opinion on what they watched on the screen. Now, of course, I'm not trying to, I'm not out here trying to be the fucking opinion police, like, like what you like, I don't give a fuck, right? But when I'm seeing this kind of behavior so much that I can predict when it's going to happen and what people are going to say, that's a problem. And I, I don't see what it serves someone to say that this is the worst show on TV. Just say you don't like it. Say it's not for you. Say it's not your vibe. But don't say it's bad when it's objectively not bad. Like, don't say it's the worst show on TV when there's seven different fucking versions of power and eight fucking spinoffs <laughs> all running simultaneously. Like, that's part of the reason that I have this channel to combat that kind of shit. Like, I'm not here to tell you if something is good or bad. Sometimes I do that. But what I mainly do is tell you what I like and don't like and why. I give you, re I like this thing because. I didn't like this thing because. What I will never do is give you an opinion that's not how I truly feel just so my opinion can align with a bunch of strangers on the internet or so I can suck up to a fucking podcaster. Like, that's, that's weirdo shit, people. Anyway, um, that's all I got for this week. Uh, I'm going to get a video out tomorrow for the first two episodes of Disclaimer on Apple TV. Uh, I'll, I'll save my opinion for, for that video. So if you want to know what I thought, you're going to have to watch that video. But let me know what you thought about this episode of this show in the comments. And until next week, peace.